Okay, so I'm looking right now at the coronavirus da uh, data for August 27. It's on a site called Worldometers. Um, I, I think it's probably one of my most trusted sites just because it cites everything that it puts in there. It also combs data from local, regional, and national sources and gets multiple sources to compare the data. Uh, so this is the data, but I want to do a map of this data. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try grabbing the the name, uh, the website here. I'm going to go to our spreadsheet, uh, start a new spreadsheet here. I'm going to try, first of all, the import HTML method, where I put the website, table, and one. If this doesn't work, then I can grab and copy the data, but this works really well. Now keep in mind, this isn't actual data right now yet because it's still being controlled by the formula in this, this first cell. So I'm gonna click here. I'm going to control C, copy the data, click here again, uh, right click, paste special, values only. Uh, I know I'm going through this really quickly. The, the point here is just to, to show you where I'm getting my data. Okay, and then I want to take out things that aren't the actual countries here. So I'm going to just take these regions of the world and delete them. Um, oh, and, and also the world itself that I'm going to make a national level map. So I don't really need that. I'm also going to take a peek just down at the bottom. Yeah, there's some other lines that aren't countries. So I'm going to delete them. And I'm going to grab this slide all the way back to the top. Okay. So what I want to do now is I think I'm going to look at, um, so I, I could do the total number of deaths by each country, but I've talked about that before. Uh, it's not really fair to compare countries of different sizes. Um, so instead, what I'm going to do, and let me just show you something if, if it feels like your data is too spread out. So I'm grabbing A, scrolling over, holding down Shift, grabbing S, and then I'm going to get somewhere between one of the lines between two columns and scrunch that together. Uh, that way I can see a lot more of the data all at once. Uh, this can be, be useful. So I want deaths per million of the population. That gives me a rate, so that controls for country size. I'm going to grab that, I'll click on it first, and then bring it over so it's right beside my countries. And then um, I think what I'm going to do is just go ahead and make a, a map. So I'm going to click on B and then drag and then release my mouse button. Uh, you could also click on B, hold down shift and click on C. Again, all of this um, is just to give you some background knowledge of, of how I'm manipulating the spreadsheets here. Then I'm going to go to insert chart. And because one of my columns is based on um, geographic data. I'm hoping it allows me to do a map. It's always a little bit hairy here. Okay, and, and we have a map here. I'm going to um, shrink this a little bit so you can see it. So this is the first map I get. Um, and to me, what are some good parts and bad parts about this graph? Um, well, for me, it's a little hard to see the variation. I see that uh, red is better, so that would be a lower death rate. Green is higher. So I can see uh, this country's Peru here if I hover over it. I also have way up here, I have um, Belgium with a pretty high one. And um, to be honest, I'm not even sure where San Marino is, but I know that that's, that's up there somewhere too. Spain's pretty high. Um, I can also see ones that are lower, or sorry, lower would be really red. So yeah, th these all here, Africa um, is, is turning really red here. It's really hard for me to see the variation in this map. And so I'm going to change this scale a little bit. Now that, that may seem like I'm doing something unethical, but in this case, um, I really have nothing to gain or prove. I just want to get a better sense of which countries um, have really low death rates according to this data, 
and which ones are really high. And right now I can't see. I mean, all of Africa looks red. All of Asia looks red. All of Europe, most of Europe, except for Spain and Italy, look red. I, I can't tell the differences. So what I'm going to do here, uh, move myself out of the way, click here, edit chart. I'm going to customize and I'm going to change a little bit the colors that I'm using here. So let me think about how I do this. If I put my max as green and then my mid also as green, maybe a little lighter green, that would give a much wider range. Right now I only have one or two countries up here and almost everyone's sitting here. So what I want to try to do is stretch out that scale so I can see, um, and, and you know what, I'm going to change it from green and red too just because of color blindness. So first, first I'm going to do red and, and blue. And then what I'm going to do is my midpoint, instead of halfway between red and blue, I'm going to change this to a light blue. And notice what happens to the map. I can now see a little bit more of the variation. I can still see that Peru is the um, one of the heaviest hit countries. It's, it's not the heaviest. Notice it's 851. And on my scale there, that's only about two thirds of the way over. I, I'm pretty sure wherever that San Marino is hiding, um, it's, it's the one that's, that's up here at the top and in Andorra also, which might be somewhere around Spain. Anyway, um, but I might want even a little more spread. Right now, still, Africa is all looking about the same color to me. Um, same with Eastern Europe and, and Asia. So what I'm gonna do is even push that further. I'm gonna get even a darker blue and now notice that most of the scale is blue and I still have most of them clustered here. So I have a couple options. I clearly have um, some outliers here and let's, let's take a look at what those outliers are. So I'm going to click on column C. Uh, let me make this a little bigger here. So I get my drop down and I'm gonna, uh, actually look, before I do that, let me, freeze that top row so that way that top row won't move and then i'm going to sort yeah there's the san marino what happens if i just go ahead and delete this i'm just going to delete san marino okay that that helps me see the variation a little better um, if i would take out belgium and peru also okay now i'm really starting to see the variation uh, a little more, especially throughout the Americas. Um, Russia's starting to turn a, a more of a blue color. I can see it has a higher death rate than the African countries. Let me try one more thing. I'm going to go to my chart. Uh, I'm going to see if I can just choose the same blue. Okay. Yeah. Um, still still makes it a little hard to see but i'm starting to see some of the variation now between between the countries okay i'm gonna i'm gonna go with this here uh, for now um so was it okay that i took out those outliers and was it okay that i messed with the colors yes um i do want to make make sure i i make note that i i removed those three countries um, that were all very, very high death rates by COVID. And this, this changing the colors in this particular case um, was to show the variation more, to be able to see the differences between countries, specifically if I'm trying to see the countries that have really low death rates, uh, maybe because I wanna know what's going on there. Why, why do they have low death rates? So, so both of those were legitimate reasons in my case. Now, if I was intentionally trying to exclude a country or intentionally trying to like push a political view or sell something, um, that same thing that I did with changing the colors could be less ethical. So it really depends on uh, what the intent is here. But my intent, my main goal was to see which, which countries um, have the lowest death rates. And now I, I'm starting to be able to see that the, the lowest red is really here in Central Africa, really most of Africa, but especially Central Africa, a little bit here in, in South America. And then I'm seeing a lot here in East and Southeast Asia. So China, Thailand, uh, Burma, Laos, some of these, these countries right here. 
So um, my next question is, um, what's going on? What I, I'm analyzing the map. So the first thing, and I, I'm going to ask you to do this on the authentic quiz, I, I, I want to know the stories. One story is that the Americas have some of the highest, the Americas and Western Europe have some of the highest COVID death rates, at least according to this data, whereas Africa and Asia especially East and Southeast Asia, seem to have some of the lowest rates in the world. Um, so that's one story. I might also point out little outliers. So the first thing with stories would be to mention um, any trends I see. The second would be any outliers or interesting things. So I might notice that there's back-to-back -back countries here, uh, one which has a very high rate and one which has a very low rate. And this turns out to be um, I believe we're looking there at Sweden and Finland. Uh, Sweden had a very different strategy than Finland did. So that's worth noting. Sweden just kind of let the virus sweep through their country, uh, whereas Finland was more, a little more similar to the, the US. Okay, so those are the, that's kind of the weather report mentioned. So I might say, yeah, the Americas seem to have uh, higher COVID death rates in general. Uh, Africa, and especially Central Africa and East Southeast Asia seem to have the lowest rates in the world. Uh, but then I might point out a, a couple of these little things. Okay, the next question I want to address is the fact, so why are Central Africa and East or Southeast Asia, um, why, why do they have lower death rates? Again, at least according to this data. Um, one story might be that these governments aren't reporting data very well. Uh, so then we, we think about, we have to use all these clues. It really is like a detective um, mystery, like trying to figure out what's going on here. Uh, so here, I, I lived four years in Asia, and I can point out that um, China, there, there is a very possible scenario where they they might the government might control and regulate the data that's released uh, and it may or may not be very accurate but the other thing i know is that these asian governments china south korea thailand laos vietnam they're they're very different entities and so to see an entire block of countries uh, that's all reporting a very low rate i i don't think that that's a government um issue, government reporting issue. I think something else is going on there. Again, that's my personal, using my background um, to try to make sense of what stories are going on here. Uh, Africa, it could be very well be, I mean, the life expectancy of these countries is much lower than the rest of the world. And as you probably know, uh, COVID does tend to hit the older ages much harder. Uh, so it could just be that the lower death rate is coming from the younger population there. That would be, to me, consistent with what I see here. Um, with East Southeast Asia, we could say that these countries are mask wearing countries. And so maybe that's why they have a lower rate. I mean, yes, people in the U.S., some people are wearing masks, but it's more a forced thing and they don't really want to and they're not really used to it in, in many cases. Um, whereas uh, this has been something that Asian countries have done for decades, or at least years, I, I think decades. Um, here we run into an issue called correlation versus causation. So just because these countries have been mask wearing countries in the past and this have not, and these have a low death rate and we do not, uh, doesn't mean the mac masks are what is causing the lower death rate. Now, it could very well be. In fact, this is really good evidence. I want to be clear that this is good evidence for that claim uh, that masks are reducing the death rate, uh, but it doesn't prove it because there could be what's called lurking variables. In other words, other variables that explain, like in, in Asian culture, it's a collectivist culture. People are much more concerned about the good of the society than necessarily the good of themselves. Whereas we come from more individualistic culture, we think of ourselves first and then maybe donate to others or, or whatever. And so that trying to protect those around us could really lower the spread, whereas people kind of fighting for themselves, uh, maybe a disease spreads more quickly through there. To me, that, that story is more consistent than the government reporting story. Okay, 
that is where I'm going to stop for today.